What are you wearing? I'm Neil Breen. I'm Neil Breen. Brian, we talked about this. Yeah, we said I was going to be Neil Breen. We can't both be Neil Breen. Yeah, I know. So you have to change. I'm Neil Breen. I... Well, wait, hold on. I have a compromise. We have always been talking about the Neil Breen cinematic universe. I say in the in the name of in the, in the name of Neil Breen. Halloween. And in the spirit of Halloween. Halloween in the spirit of Halloween. <laughs> Spirit of Hollow Breed! Breedoverse 2018! Hello <laughs> oh, welcome back to Good Better Bad Bad, show we watch terrible movies and tell you you should too. I'm your host, Mr. Brian Shilgo, and by that, I mean Mr. Neil Breen. Joined by my other host, Mr. Neil Breen. Uh, we're not doing a Neil Breen movie today, unfortunately. Yeah, uh... It's not out yet. I don't. I don't have the RAM. It's already been absorbed into my my biometric. Uh, yes, you're the advanced yeah, version. Exactly. You're the exactly. advanced version. Uh, and I am, of course, double down Neil Breen. Uh, so yeah, unfortunately, it's not a Neil Breen film this time. We are. Uh, it's not out yet. I mean, yeah. it's out. It's in theaters, but it's not out yet. So uh, what we're going to be doing is talking about a little film called Night Beast. What? This is a classic Don Dolder film. So, uh, Night Beast is pretty good. We're going to talk about it. It's it's interesting because it is it is very clear. It's a 1982 uh, sci-fi horror flick. Yeah, there's there's problems with our uh, antagonists. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> there's problems with everything in this movie. But uh, it's, it's, you know, it's... It's not my favorite movie we've ever done. No. But but well let's let's just get into it and let the chips fall where they may uh with this one. Um so like I said it's our first Don Dolor film. We've never done a Don Dolor film. He has made I believe like he directed about 7 to 10 movies. Um from what I understand most of them are the same film. <laughs> Alien monster comes and kills people? Yes. Kind of like Neil Breen. Like, let me just keep making the same thing, and eventually maybe I'll do it well. How dare you? How dare you? Especially Neil with Twisted Pair is nothing like any of the other films he's so, made. So and for the first time, I'm hoping to shoot Twisted completely at night, which I've never done before. I trust you. Completely. This is the itchiest thing I have ever had on my head. How do you think I felt in our previous Halloween? I'm gonna keep doing this the really? entire time. Just, uh, uh. <laughs> uh, this is the okay. We're gonna make it through. Um, so we get a great model spaceship opening, uh, flying yes. through space. Flying this looks pretty Did good. Did it like explode from Saturn or something? What yeah, the? I don't know. Would no no idea. Couldn't couldn't be bothered to explain what happened there, and I. Don't really care, so. Goddamn Neil Breen hair. Yeah, I know, it's, it's like, it's the itchiest thing. It's also um, terrible Neil Breen hair. <laughs> yeah, well, it's close. Yeah. It's the, it's the roughly the right shape, uh, the volume, way too much. Not necessarily volume, it's a little too thick yeah, for, yeah, for Neil's exactly. hair. He's a little, he's getting up there and it's a little thin. Um, and mine, for some reason, I, yours is much more together. Mine is like, I don't know, it's like falling apart. I feel like, like, the, like the, <laughs> oh my God. Like, hmm. Bieber brain. <laughs> this look good. This whole review is just going to be us playing with our wits and like not talking about the movie. Oh my goodness. I'm just going to leave it like this until it itches my eyeballs too much and then I'll stop. Um, so great model uh, spaceship openings. Pretty great. Uh, and then uh, this is the thing I found out. Apparently a very young J.J. Abrams did the music for this movie. What? Apparently, uh, supposedly, when he was 15, he did the music for this movie. I don't know if that's true. That's what it says on IMDb. So what, he hit like four notes on a synthesizer? Yeah. I mean, it's very much uh, going for sort of a John Carpenter inspired, you know, synth, simple synth kind of thing. It's pretty good. I mean, it's fine. The score's fine. Mm -hmm. 
Are you weak? I know. Just... It's so I I keep seeing myself in the reflection behind you, and it's I have to whew, whew, keep stop. Okay, that's itching like a motherfucker. So I'm gonna get that out of my face and readjust. readjust. Now, All right. The, the the chicken of the game is this: which one of us is gonna take off the wig first? I'm leaving it on the whole time. It's not going anywhere. I've already proven my commitment, so you mm-hmm. know what my answer is. Perfect. God. You took it off. That counts. No, it doesn't. <laughs> you did. You took it off. That counts. Uh, so we're introduced to our main character, Mustache Cop. I don't remember his name. Doesn't matter. He's got a fucking terrible fro and a terrible mustache. Jack Cider. Is that his name? Jack Cider. Jack Cider. Is his middle initial in? Jack Probably. Insider. Because <laughs> he fucks a girl in this movie. Get it? So then he land, crash lands, and they go to investigate. Rallies a bunch of people to go check out this crash landing site, basically. Yeah. Uh, Which, okay. So of all the things, they, uh, essentially, if you were in law enforcement with this situation, you'd be like, that's a plane crash, probably. Yeah, I mean, you need to it, call it, like the ATF or something like uh, the, that. Was it the FFA or, or whatever? Like yeah, future, yeah, not ATF. Future Farmers of America. Yeah, yeah, FAA. yeah. FFA. <laughs> and the uh, the NTSB. Yeah. would come in and do their whole thing. The, like, you, but you might still go up in and check it yeah, out. You just would set to a, see. You would set a perimeter, and you'd probably go in there to make sure, like, is anybody hurt? Can I, you know, yeah, can we render exactly. assistance? Um, so that's kind of, I guess, what the idea is. But he does rally a whole bunch of people with guns for some reason. Mm-hmm. Uh, <laughs> And, and the alien, alien steps out and starts vaporizing everybody. Literally, like, has a laser gun that is the best sound in the whole movie. Pew, just pew, over pew, and over. Uh, this pew. whole first five minutes is just that laser sound effect. Over and over and over. Yeah, I'm just going to put it over our conversation for the next four minutes, and you'll get a feel you for what J. it's J. like. You think J.J. Abrams folded that? <laughs> yeah, it's like him throwing, like, a, a penny down a well or something like that. <laughs> so when he shoots the first guy, uh, they find, they get there, and they find that it left a black, like, outline yeah. of the guy in the ground. I assume that's sort of inspired by the idea of, I mean, and maybe other sci-fi movies did it, but of, like, uh, an atomic bomb going off and the whole, like, you know, like the shadow of the person on the Get thing. An outline. Right, but here's the thing where this doesn't make any sense. In this one, the guy's standing up. <laughs> gets vaporized standing up. Yeah. And then the thing is a horizontal. Yeah. Like. What the hell is that? Did he fall backwards into the dust form? Like, because later it makes a little bit of sense because it happens again with a guy, but that guy's laying on the ground when it happens. You're the one who gets shot in the ass? But that guy's laying on the ground, so that at least makes sense that there's like an outline of him when he gets vaporized. But other times people don't get vaporized, they turn into oh, red goo. Fucking wig. <laughs> Don't they just turn into red goo? Yeah, yeah. I, sometimes there's like different effects for well, how it depe- depends on you know whenever he loses the gun, the laser thing, he's just ripping people's arms off. That's well. That's because I think they realized halfway through the movie they were like, we can't afford to keep doing all these lasers. Like we're not going to be able to afford to CG, uh, quote unquote CG. It's not the right word, I'm sure, but CG these lasers in for the whole movie. So we're gonna break the gun a third of the way through the movie, so then he can just walk around and kind of hug people to death. <laughs> also, I love on the mustache cop. Uh, he looks like he strolled straight off of a porn set from the yeah, late 70s. Yeah, exactly. That or, like, I, I wouldn't be hard-pressed. You would. It would not be hard to convince me that they were simultaneously filming a porn, like, one lot over. And he was just well, like... It, it does make sense for a later scene. <laughs> That's true. <laughs> oh, we got... Oh, I can't wait to talk about also, this thing. Also, with the other... With the uh, Bart... Bart guy? Barty? Whatever his name is? Bertie? Which one's that? Bert. It, the guy who's hosting the oh, party the, for the, the mayor, the mayor, I think. I think he's the a mayor? mayor. I think that's the idea. Yeah. Point being is that guy is is one hundred percent owns a house where porn is shot at. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Now, now, yeah. here's the thing. Here's the thing. It's the seventies equivalent of the houses from the Incubus. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Exactly, <laughs> exactly. Now, here's the thing. Both these films coming back to back, we had the exact same impression. Does 
Now, is that stuck in our head for any particular reason? No, this guy absolutely looks like a sleazeball. No, yeah, no. That, yeah, that's, that's the reason. Oh my god, he's passed out. Uh, so then there's a random scene with some child actors and Uncle Dave. Bobby's talking, Uncle Dave. And Uncle Dave gets vaporized or something. But we finally see the mask. We finally see the creature. Oh, God. And yeah. this creature is so interesting because it rides the line right between truly terrible because it's not scary at no. all. It looks ridiculous. No, it looks like Admiral Akbar with teeth. Yeah. <laughs> in a constant, like, horrified slash, like, surprised face. <laughs> but it's well made, kind of ish. Like, it. Yeah, if it was a cooler design made to the same quality, it would be kind of cool. If they cool. would put like an oil or maybe like some sort of viscous liquid, yeah, it on needs it a, it well. needs a, it needs a wash of like, uh, yeah, some sl sl shiny, slippery, slippery. Yeah. Uh, but it's but it's not the worst made mask in the world. But also, it doesn't it does a thing where good monsters either one it, if it do, it doesn't have to because obviously like Mike Myers, you can't. He does his face doesn't emote doesn't move at all, but no. he's just a faceless killer. Yeah, same um, thing with like love and, and, and like stuff. scream. But sometimes it's it, when it's like a monster, it helps to have something that moves a little and emotes like an alien. It well, yeah, there's it, an easy solution for that. Put them in a, incredibly dark places. So yeah, you can't see. That's all we do is we just shoot it in the dark, so then we don't have to. Yeah. <laughs> and here's the thing too is that a lot of this movie is is it's shot at weird qualities like. In, in in general, it's shot pretty competently. But one of the things that's really weird is there's some really cool shots in the beginning with like fog and like cool silhouettes, and I'm like, oh, somebody here knew how to light a shot and like yeah. set a sh or and then you know and lay out a shot. Uh, but then a lot of it, other times, it's like they took a spotlight and just flooded a, the woods and told a guy to go stand there. And it's like, <laughs> how are these two, like, were these um, two units shooting or something and one unit knew what they were doing? I, I have done that before with uh, <laughs> with outdoor night shots. It shoots where it's like just a blast of light comes from nowhere. And yeah. It's like, oh, okay. Yeah. I also, we get to watch the kids die, but because they're kids, yeah. you can't see them, like, well, get their heads ripped off or, like, vaporized. They get in the car, hide, and then the car gets vaporized. It's like, all right, I guess that's, like, the best we can get for murdering kids. Which, if I'm going to see kids die, I want to see kids Demonetized. <laughs> Demonetized. I couldn't decide if the alien was impervious to bullets or if literally none of them ever hit it ever. Like what? I don't know. I don't know what the answer is because it doesn't ever seem to be affected by anything they do. except for electrocution, we find out. But they also never specifically say, oh, we shot them so many times and it doesn't affect them. So were they just missing or was is he impervious to bullets? I mean, I know why practically they didn't show him getting shot was because then they'd have to like destroy the makeup they made and they probably had one set of that suit slash makeup. Yeah. But I couldn't, I was like, I don't, I don't get the, well, your, I don't understand your alien character movie. And then he just blows up. <laughs> runs up in the opening shootout oh yeah yeah right next to him with a gun and what would you do in that instance bang right maybe shoot the he pistol whips the alien the alien turns around and does oh, a thing claws him claws him and he gets and he disappears and then some that storyline goes nowhere some great makeup yeah yeah right but that goes nowhere so they come back later to find him and they're like he was right here there's blood on the ground look something's wrong I know this is where he fell. There's definitely blood here, Sheriff. And then he, they're like, so he was either crawled away or he got drug away. Maybe Berkeley wasn't dead. He may have dragged himself out of here. 
or been dragged away. And you think that's going to come back in some way. Like yeah. they're going to find him later or he's going to have been like infected or you know something. Nope, he's just gone for the rest nope. of the fucking movie. Cool. Hey, you guys like you guys have me for one night of shooting, right? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I guess and they, literally one night because he couldn't even be bothered to come be a dead body the next day when they shot the <laughs> go finding his body scene. Yeah. <laughs> they had to be like, I guess he got taken away. I gotta readjust. I gotta. Re, I gotta re. Uh, brain adjust. I gotta brain adjust. Hollow brain, 2018. There we go. That's a little better. Well, the good news is for next year we can do uh, faithful findings and pass through. Oh, and then the following yeah. year we can do twisted, twisted pair. pair. Both of them. Both of them. <laughs> yeah. Oh. It's gonna be brilliant. You'll have to be the uh, either. Uh, yeah. Uh, oh, so no, no, I think no. it'd be better if, if you're the one. <laughs> <laughs> Who am I? <laughs> what am I? <laughs> oh, love you, Breen. Um, uh, so then there's we go directly into another shootout the next day at a farm with some farmers who just happened by, I guess. Um, that old man yeah. is training that shot oh for a God. while. He aims for like 30 goddamn minutes. <laughs> Aiming, aiming. And then it cuts away and something else happens and we cut back and he's bang and he finally shoots and he does. He blasts the gun. He nails it. Mm -hmm. uh, but right as his son, I guess, yeah. gets vaporized, like diving. It's pretty cool. Jimmy! Um, I also couldn't understand... I don't know if you can explain this to me, Mr. Science Man um, from the future. Uh, why does his laser only affect cars and people and not trees or rocks mm -hmm. or the ground? Well, or there's, a, there's an easy explanation for that. Uh, you see, cars and people can be brought to a location and... <laughs> And then removed from and a then, location. And then removed from a location. Uh, <laughs> that is absolutely the reason it works on those two things because of the plot. Yes. <laughs> or because that's, yeah. Oh, that is true. So you, you can't, here's the thing, you can't ask Neil Breen too much in the way about trees and stuff because he's in the in desert. desert. Yeah. of head itchiness <laughs> hey if you're looking for good wigs don't get them from twenty dollars on amazon overnight <laughs> it's not quality stuff it also doesn't good fit Lord, it's so... you look like you look like a woman from like the the 70s or the eight or the 60s with like that hair that oh boy oh yeah i kind of like, look like, like i look woman. like alice from the brady yes. bunch yes <laughs> That's exactly it. You look. What, what's her name? Betty. Da or uh, what, what's her name? Not, something. Something. Know, Davis. Know. Right. Uh, maybe. Whatever. I don't know. <laughs> Just throw up. Uh, throw up the Brady Bunch theme song. That's the way we became the Brady Bunch. You insinuating Neil Breen looks like Alice? Neil Breen <laughs> would never, ever lock down his luscious locks <laughs> with a ponytail. That's true. That's He's got to let that shit flow. I flow, bet flow, Neil Green had a ponytail at some point in his life. <laughs> yeah, probably, probably 90s. <laughs> uh, where are we at here? <laughs> probably looked like Schneider from uh, Three Ninjas. <laughs> this isn't a terrible Schneider. No. You're almost wearing a gi there. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> Say goodbye to Grandpa, boys. Ah, so much for never fighting battles. You can't win. Ha! Ha! So then we're introduced, we're, we meet all the other cops and stuff, including Lisa, who's the female, the blonde female cop, who to me, I, for the first times I saw her, could not stop seeing uh, Andrea from The Walking Dead, mm -hmm. um, who died like eight seasons ago. Who cares? No, the show's stupid. Um, <laughs> I 
Then we just, yeah, like I said, we just get the uh, another shootout with the farmers, and it, no, nothing matters. Nobody cares. Uh, he gets the, he does kill the gun though, which is good. He kills the gun. He kills the shit out of that gun. Yeah. Uh, and then we cut to the mayor's office. It, like hard cut to the mayor or his house. Sorry. Yeah. And I th I think he said he was the mayor. Um, because he, he's he's gonna have a bunch of he's gonna have a party with a bunch of politicians. I've got this party for Governor Embry here this afternoon. Remember, election time, ass kissing time. He's just watching the his secretary swim. And the governor's gonna be there. The governor's gonna be there. I can't I can't knock this party <laughs> off now. The governor's the gonna governor's be there. The governor's gonna be there. And this is very much where I feel the influence of like a Jaws type of thing, where like we can't shut down the beach. <laughs> the governor's gonna be here. <laughs> <laughs> Y'all know about killing sharks. You know who I am and what I do. You put cage in the water, you get into cage. Sharks in the water. Uh, yeah. I love the way this scene ends. Uh, his answer to these problems is to have another whiskey at 10 in the morning. <laughs> I'll see you later, Bert. I uh, think I need another drink, honey. Okay, Bertie. And don't call me Bertie. And then we meet Drago. Who is the human antagonist? Drago! Drago! <laughs> hey, Cinder, what brings you way out here away from your cozy little office? Keep moving, Drago, before I run you in for disturbing the peace. <laughs> I was like, I assume that's his last name or his nickname, because oh, there's 0% chance in middle America that this guy's first name is Drago, but. <laughs> if it dies, <laughs> it dies. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You gonna take me off my bike? Stay out of my way, Draco. I'm in no mood for your crap. You know what I say, Sheriff? Go to hell. They decide uh, they're they're gonna get everybody out of town and uh, and go confront another. Who, it doesn't matter. But uh, one of the guys says Jamie, I think is his name. Mm -hmm. Says he wants to stop by Cindy's. Is it all right if we stop by Susie's house on the way? I haven't had time to warn her. Who is specifically says. Uh, one of the other cops goes, isn't that Drago's girl? Drago's girl? And he's like, yeah, I've been fucking yeah, her. Yeah, but I'm banging her on the <laughs> side. <laughs> yep. Yeah, I've been seeing her lately. Uh, so then we cut to her house, and uh, Drago's like being a shithead to her, right? It, yeah, okay, this is amazing. Yeah, okay, so he, he knows something's up. Dr Draco. Drago. <laughs> he knows so something up, Drago. and he's like, you know, abuse, abuse. Yeah, yeah. But she, am I crazy that she is smiling in this whole scene? I swear to God. Get off! You're getting rough, huh? You like that, huh? Every time, she's only in the movie for like 10 minutes, but the whole time she's getting beaten up, I swear she's like, either it's just her face or she's like, <laughs> yeah, like smiling, like she can't, like she's laughing through the scenes. It was oh, so weird. Boy. I was like, So then Drago gets uh, Drago leaves and uh, he gets on his motorcycle and rides 40 feet away to go sit on a hill and spy on her. Mm -hmm. And that's when our, our cops show up to check on her. And what's his name? Jamie runs inside. <laughs> by, by the way, by the way, okay, so she is stripped down at this point. Mm -mm. Yeah, and Jamie arrives. We cut to Drago looking, and then we cut back to Jamie. He gets in and leaves. And then we cut back to her, and she's still, like, you know, naked and putting yeah, her clothes on. Yeah, she's changing. Like, oh, that must have been awkward. <laughs> No, they're fucking. He doesn't. Well, yeah, yeah, I get that, but it's like she couldn't. She explained what happened. They weren't gonna be like, hey, yeah, since I know the I know the local law enforcement, and you've just been abused. Let's, let's go ahead and have you stay here yeah, alone. Yeah, that seems like a mistake. Real big mistake. I agree that he's just like, yeah, I talked to her. She said she's going to leave town soon. Drago was just here hassling her. Is she okay? Yeah, she said she could throw her stuff together and be out of here in a few minutes. But yeah, I also don't get why he didn't just say, no, put some clothes on, let's go now. Because she literally leaves like a minute later. Yeah. Like, why exactly. didn't she just come with like, uh, whatever. Uh, Drago comes back and he kills her. Yeah. He immediately comes back and just strangles her to death. And, Relatively off camera. <laughs> yeah, completely off camera. And you just hear like a... <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's exactly, that's exactly what I heard. Oh, and then we get to the the pool party, the yeah, pool party with yeah. all the people. This is the big scene. This is where they brought in a whole bunch of people. This is my biggest gripe with this entire movie. Hmm. So they 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 get to the pool party, and it's like there's all these extras. There's like gorgeous girls lounging by the pool. There, I assume, like other local big wigs and politicians there to hang out with the governor and rub elbows, you know, that sort of thing. Um, yeah. Because it's this big party that he can't cancel with the governor, and the governor shows up. Art. 
It's really great to be here in your quaint little town. It's great to have you here, Governor. And let me assure you that the people of Perry Hill are behind you 100%. His and aid, I love the governor. His aide is amazing. Yeah, his aide's great. But I also love, I was like, is that what governors dressed like in the early 80s? <laughs> He's he wearing like, like a, a yeah. striped shirt. He looked and like, like he was going for, for like a golf outing. Or yeah, something like and that. I guess, yeah, I guess the idea is because he knows he's going to like a picnic, basically. That he, mm -hmm. you know, he's not wearing a suit. But I thought I was like, you look, you don't look like a governor. You look ridiculous. You know, I didn't see too many people when we came through town. It seemed a little deserted. Well, it's Saturday morning, people are sleeping late. But let me assure you, some of the nicest folks are right here. I love he order. They offer him a drink, and they go, "Can I get you a, a, like a Manhattan or something?" He goes, "No, I drink vodka and water, mild." Uh, the governor prefers vodka and water, mild, please. All right, Jane, would you get the governor a vodka and water, mild? Sure. And I don't know what that means. I mean, I know what vodka water means. Is it just is that diluted? warm? I have no clue. To me, vodka water mild means. Like warm, like no First ice off, in it. You're asking somebody who. Sorry, drink I shouldn't be asking head. you. I shouldn't be asking you. Vodka and water, mild. They also these politicians are like the bad guys in a Neil Breen movie. I yes. don't know if you caught their yes. one line. Oh my god, some of it's great. <laughs> they have like some one line, and it's so good. He goes, uh, he's talking to him. God, what do you think of the uh, the campaign this year? I mean, it's, it's it's pretty pretty heavy, isn't it? And he goes, the 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 governor goes. Yes, uh, we're going to steal a lot of money in Carroll County. We're going to steal a lot of money in Carroll County. <laughs> That's what he says. And then, and then the other guy, the mayor, goes, "Yeah, it's real easy to steal from Carroll County." Oh, good. Well, you know they have plenty there to steal. And I was like, "These are the villains." Yes, this from is a Neil the, this Breen is, movie. This is the movie that Neil Breen watched Watch, yeah, right. to understand everything about politics and, and, and stuff. This is his exclusive political uh, education. Is the two guys in this movie being like, "We're gonna steal money from people." Yes, uh, we're going to steal a lot of money in Carroll County. It, what it, what it, yep. is exactly what it reminds me of is. Uh, Pa was it pass through? Yeah, it's pass through. Yeah, where he goes into that high society party, mm -hmm. and all these people are talking about yeah about stealing crappy, money. Yeah, all the crappy things. It is do. exactly the scene. <laughs> I was like, yeah, it was like, yeah, we're gonna steal a lot of money in Carl County, just like I was saying it out loud at a pool party. <laughs> it's like fantastic. And then and then it blows up. Yes, uh, we're going to steal a lot of money in Carl County. Isn't that corrupt? Oh, good. Well, you know they have plenty of there to steal. Isn't that betraying the public's trust? If it can be destroyed by the truth, it deserves to be destroyed by the truth. So they set up this pool party. So it's the thing. This can't be stopped. This pool party can't be stopped. No, right? it's, it's, it's got to happen. The, it's, it's the, the governor's going to be the there. It's the Catalina wine mixer. <laughs> <laughs> um, so I love that. So that setup. So what you're when as soon as he says I can't stop this party, what do you expect, right? Because we know there's a killer alien on the loose. Mm -hmm. I can't stop this party. It's super important. Now me as a viewer, I'm going fucking sweet. All these fucking politicians and chicks at this pool party are gonna get murdered gloriously on camera, right? Yeah. yeah. That's what you think. Mm -hmm. When they set up that premise of a party that we can't cancel while an alien's on the loose killing people, holy shit, we're going to get to watch this pool party get murdered by an alien. What happens... Jamie comes to the rescue. Jamie rolls up and goes, hey, everybody! Getting everybody's attention in the best way shooting possible. A gun in shooting the air. a gun in the air. Yeah. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, may I please have your attention? Everybody! Gotta leave. There's poisonous gas leaking. I'm sorry to interrupt this lovely party, but I'm afraid we're going to have to ask everyone to leave. We've just discovered that poison gas is leaking from the old mines, and for your own safety, we're evacuating the town. Which, which, by the way, if you're gonna, if you're going to, and he's not, he's not an actual. Like, no, he's just like a guy. Just a guy. I think, yeah. Having a citizen pull out a firearm with the governor of your state yeah, right? there. <laughs> And by the way, where the hell is this security? Zero security. It's the 80s. They didn't need security. Good lord. So he just fires a gun in the air, and it, it, he should... I would act... If he got arrested, I would be like, that makes sense. Yeah, that makes perfect <laughs> sense. Or shot. Like, like if yeah. whoever... Like, if the governor's aide pulled out a gun <laughs> and shot him, I'd be like, yeah, all right. <laughs> that makes sense. Um, but he says uh, the gas is leaking from the mines. Poisonous gas. And everybody fucking loses their mind. It's like straight pandemonium. Everybody starts screaming and leaves. <laughs> Oh, 
oh, so we're that's over now. Yep, we don't get to do anything with that. Nope. You're gonna set up this great. They were, hey, they were there for one day of shooting. Yeah, exactly. They had all these extras for one day of shooting. I'm sure originally in the script they had this glorious scene where the alien rolled into the pool party and fucking murdered everybody and, and ate barbecue, yeah. but they had to cut and, it out. And generally speaking, uh, especially if you're working in a low crew of like, say, skeleton crew, you're looking at... Kyle like, knows these things because he works on small Yeah, yeah. Okay, so <laughs> you're looking at a crew of like, what, probably five to eight people, give or take, as the crew Yeah, I would say scenes. less than 15. Um, when you start dealing with a bunch of people... It's, you have to treat them like animals, okay? Right. You have to treat them like cattle uh, because when you get a whole bunch of people together, shit never gets done. Kyle approves of treating, treating human beings like cattle. Hey, whenever I was... You heard it here first. Whenever I was working on Gone Girl, we had like... Got, had to be somewhere up, upwards of 70 plus extras in one of the scenes I was yeah. working on. They had to be moved like cattle because uh, you, you cannot treat p- these people like human beings. Otherwise, you're going to move the industry in a nutshell, it's, folks. It's absolutely <laughs> true. Like what what uh, Alfred Hitchcock said about working with extras. Oh, it's so true. <laughs> so yeah, that's all I got to say about that. And that's all I have to say about that. <laughs> like Forrest Gump. And that's all I got to say about that. <laughs> Why are my hands so small? I think it is it is it the robe? Is it the sleeves or is it the sleeves? I I mean I generally I have small fingers, but my I don't know. I I have normal size. I don't think mine are particularly big. Um I love that too that when they when they start running away, the 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 aide is like yanking on the governor's arm. And Mm. it's like the most unconvincing, like they're like, you gotta pull him, like you're trying to get him away from the party, but like make it look serious. And he's like, okay, and he's like Believe me, you're going to regret this. Come along, Governor. We must get you to safety. See, see, what they needed was another aide for the governor to pull him, because obviously one couldn't do it. So uh, the aides would have pulled him out of the party. Are you done? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no. Oh, no, no. <laughs> oh God. Okay. I had worse jokes. No, yeah, you did. Um, <laughs> uh, so uh, we meet some random characters. One of them gets their arm knocked off. Which yeah. Which is pretty great. <laughs> We're introduced to the doctors, which is kind of important because they're two like, of the main characters. One of them is the, the corner, rest. I'm pretty sure. Sorry, yeah. One's a corner and then like his wife, I guess, who's also like a doctor of some sort. Some sort. I think because she does like, she like... They bring her like a, a dead body. I don't know. She's involved somehow. She yeah. seems like a doctor yeah. of some sort. I love too. There's some great moments where like where the guy gets his arm. I think it's where the guy gets his arm cut off, and the music's like really intense, and then it just hard cuts. Sheriff's office, Jamie speaking. Mm-hmm. To her on the phone, like, oh, we need help. Like that's one of the best signs of like a terrible. Like well, editing in in bad yeah. movies where they do that, where there's zero pacing to the editing. It's do, just do like, you, do, you to, do you want me to explain what happened there? Yeah, go for so it. So they had it cut like that. That that's how whenever they got it through the uh, their linear editing system, that's how they cut it out. And then they're like, oh, it doesn't make sense that people would just show up here. We need a, a scene to show the that the sheriff and stuff needs to get there. So and they like put it in, it in, and they didn't mix it. Beforehand. Yeah, because the all the sound just cuts, and then she's just in there. Yeah, it's. And that's a good sign of bad movies because you can normally find those moments where it's like this is the, the editing, the pacing of the editing is so poorly matched and it doesn't, it's just like action. Oh! It would have been great if they would have went back to the outdoor scene and the music would have kicked yeah. up again. <laughs> yeah. Be careful. Right. <laughs> then you're like, yep, they clearly just. Splice yeah. that in. So then they they so our our guys are coming now. Are the 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 cavalry's coming? But the two doctors uh, need to hide, so they run down in the basement. Yeah. Uh, and this scene is so fucking weird. Yeah. Um. So they get in the basement, and the alien comes down into the basement. Yeah. 
And apparently this basement's huge, even though it doesn't look like it is. <laughs> like, it looks like they're about five feet away and from the alien. And also this aliens, despite uh, apparently not... Uh, killing like what what like five people with that gun oh yeah yeah uh, zero peripheral vision yeah he's completely blind I've got an idea blind is a fucking bat because he literally walks down to the basement looks around and they're like it the way it's shot and the where they're staring it seems like they're like in the corner of the room like eight feet away and he's like Yep. And they're just standing there. And one of them walks right past where the alien was to like, because uh, one of our guys goes MacGyver. The dude mm -hmm. doctor's like, MacGyver's the shit out of him. He like looks around. He's like, uh, cable. Yeah. Also, water, also great it. news. It can't hear. Oh, like yeah. Anything. Yeah. Zero. Z yeah. Except for occasionally. Eventually it hears the water, I guess. <laughs> it, can't, it can't see. <laughs> it can't hear. It's the worst predator ever. <laughs> It's like the Helen Keller of movie monsters. <laughs> yep. <laughs> and, and ironically, ironically enough, in this particular scene, what helped it? Water. Water. <laughs> oh, I've fuck. seen Miracle Worker. <laughs> yeah, that, I remember that story in elementary school. <laughs> Do you know there's a little buckle back yeah, here? Yeah, yeah. What the fuck is that for? Uh, that is for, is I, I believe that's around to go your in, head? No, I believe that's to go into your existing hair. So you'd like put a pen or something like that in there. Like what? a uh, bobby pen. That's fucking weird. Mm -hmm. I don't understand wigs. Yeah. All right. I don't know. I'll take your word for it. So he figures out what he's going to do. He's going to like fucking MacGyver. And by MacGyver, I mean he's going to put an, uh, a, an, a bare wire on the floor and then dump water on it. Yes. And then until the alien stands on it. He dumps enough water on the floor, the alien notices, walks over, gets electrocuted, and they're like, let's get out of here! <laughs> so yeah, so the electric enemy runs away, and then uh, there's a great moment where... Also, can, can, can we get... Like, what's the motivation for this alien? Yeah, I let's, let's dive clearly, into clear, the, Well, clearly, let's go it's inside coming, the actor studio. It's coming from a somewhat, I don't know, advanced society of yeah, some sort. Yeah, it's got a laser gun that vaporizes things. And, and, it's and it got here, yeah. Yeah, and it's just like, and then murders things. Yeah. So, like, because, like, 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 to to relay it, like, in, in Predator, which actually came out a few years after this. Yeah. Um, in Predator, the motivation is that it's it's the hunter. It's there to get mm -hmm. trophies because it's a hunt. You know, it's like yeah. going on a trophy Which, hunt, basically. Theoretically, in that, you could say that he's, like, say, a mercenary of some sort. Like, some other people would be like, hey, uh, there's some things here that we've been looking at for a while. Can you bring us some specimens? Are you talking about Predator yeah, or this? Yeah, Predator. Sure. I, that's, I always thought the idea was that, and I haven't seen the extended canon of Predator. I've seen, like, the first two. Um, but I, my impression was always that he was just like a hunter, like a big game hunter and yeah. humans, the most dangerous game, um, are, are, you know, he's just going to collect trophies from killing. <laughs> yeah. I'm right around the Uh, to the chopper. in this one, like you said, I, I have no idea because he just shows up and starts killing things, but we have no idea if it's for any particular reason. And there's no clues as to what it could possibly. I don't need the movie to tell me. I don't need it to be yeah. like, hey, because again, Predator doesn't tell you. You kind of get it from what's going on and what it's yeah, doing. You kind of exactly. figure it out as the movie goes. It's just the difference between that is Predator has non-verbal storytelling, yeah, basically. Yeah. And, and this, this is, is just a guy in a hey, brown hey, monkey suit. Uh, or you know, all that suit. stuff that makes Predator like understandable. Let's just remove that. Yeah. And just have an alien walk around and murder thing. <laughs> Oh, also at this point, they've found out that Cindy's dead. We didn't discuss that, but we know she's dead now. Uh, they bring her, find her body, and they're like, she got strangled. Yeah. And so, oh boy, Jamie knows. Just, just the, the cut to him on Riding this up that motorcycle? Great. No, no, oh. no. Just whenever, oh, they, whenever they yeah. pull her. They bring her out. Wasn't she, she in the trunk or something like that?
head? Yeah, they had her in the trunk of the car, and he's just, it's just like this of him, and it's just. <laughs> God! We were checking all the houses, Doc, and we found it like this. Yeah, and the award goes to <laughs> Brian Chiligo. It's so good. Um, but yeah, so he, he's, he's super sad that she got murdered. Uh, and so he runs to confront Drago because he assumes Drago did it. Well, because I say I, I say runs, the, he the dirt bikes to physician, coroner, medical examiner. Yeah, she said he got strangled. Yeah. She was strangled. Uh, strangled. Yeah. And that's that's yeah. how we're like, well, since it's it wasn't the alien, she, since she wasn't rendered by claws and, or she wasn't a, a powder, a, 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 a bunch of black dust on the ground. We know that she was killed by a human and he assumes Drago. Yeah. So he goes to confront Drago. He rides up on his dirt bike and like jumps off and immediately punches Drago in the face. It's pretty great. And then I love there's a moment where during the fight where Drago swings a stick at him and and swings it down at him and he catches it like this, like across Mm -hmm. his face, like it's a big log. And then it cuts and now all of a sudden Jamie's hand is being stabbed by the log and he's bleeding. Kind of like the scene where somebody takes a knife and stabs it and you like, ah, grab the knife. It's like that, but it was a log and he was holding it horizontally. Yeah. So it makes no sense that it's like dig- stabbing his hand. But I, You know, considering laser guns, I'm okay with that. Oh, fuck it. I, yeah, I, those kind of things bother the shit out of me. It's just like, ugh. He ends up, our, our Jamie ends up winning and just pounding Drake. Oh, yeah, like just pounds the sh- Rams his dead. head into the ground constantly. He would be. He does it like twenty fucking times. Like it's like a worse beatdown than a fucking like American History X. Like this dude would be dead. He would at the very least be severely concussed. Yeah. And he's just like a little uh, annoyed by it. He's like, uh. Uh, Uh, and then there's a random scene where Jack falls off a cliff. Jack! Oh my god! Keep going, Lisa! Keep going! And this is literally... Uh, I love this... This So Jack is... Uh, is uh, As you said, Jack Cider, I believe. He's yeah, Jack he's the I'm gonna, uh, His name is Jack in Cider. I guarantee you that's his name in the script. So he falls off a cliff and you're like, oh shit, there's gonna be like a thing where he's gonna have to like fight it by himself because he hurts his leg. He gets bloody. No, nope. his leg gets fucked up. But then immediately, he meets back up with the person he was separated yeah. from, which yeah. is Lisa. <laughs> Lisa. Oh, my leg. Well, I hurt it bad. And I was like, oh, well, what the hell was the point of that scene? I'll tell you what the fuck the point of that scene was. Is so that they get back to his house, and she's like, I need to treat your leg. Let me rip them pants off and see that dick. I've got to like that's what the point of him falling off the cliff was <laughs> that is a, all that is the yeah, only no, purpose exactly that it. served it's exactly it and this was a, this was one of those things where i was like yeah she, like she, she knew what she was after in that scene because like after she's like done cleaning the wound she's like this uniform's filthy. I need to take it off. Yes. <laughs> you want to get a shower and get a clean uniform? This one's a mess. I'll just uh, stay right here. I wish you had still been shirtless for that part. <laughs> he kicked around the idea of going shirtless under there. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You gotta pay extra for that. And then she takes a shower and come back, and there's a great line where she he's she's like, I guess I bet guess I better get dressed, huh? And he's like, No. I guess I better get dressed now, huh? No. <laughs> and then it's like the most awkward sex scene. My favorite shot in this whole two things about this scene. One, people back in the day kissed like fucking weirdos. and you will never convince me otherwise. They just <laughs> rub their fucking mouths against each other like fucking creeps. Two, 
The well, tan lines. <laughs> well, two. Okay, so then three things. Two tan <laughs> lines. Holy shit! But three, which I don't. Know, I'm gonna have to. I'll do my best to show you with <laughs> while getting around while, while censoring. Um, three. I love this juxtaposition of the shot. It literally it shows her, and she's she's naked. Cuts a shot of her, so we see like her. You know, not we don't see anything below but the waist, but like you know her naked body, and she's she's an attractive woman. And then it it cuts to the guy shirtless <laughs> in the same position, it's and he is like this very, pale, very, schlubby, yes. four chest hair. Like it's either either have chest hair or don't have chest hair. He has like four <laughs> sticking at random directions. Brian says that while being a. a f- Fucking ape man underneath. You either have it or you don't. Don't have four, I feel like, is the way it goes. The guy has, like, again, like, four chest hairs, like, gray chest hairs, like, and it's, it is, again, she's not even the most beautiful woman in the world, but she's attractive, and then it cuts to him, and I'm like, oh, God, like, is this supposed to be the same reaction of, like, look, oh, so hot, oh, so hot, because that is not what is happening here <laughs> at all. Uh, and then we cut to the mayor and his secretary wasted out of their minds. Yes. Barney, I want another drink. What are you doing up here? I want another drink, party. Which is important. Um, because Not important, but that's what happened. They're wasted, and, and one of the guys shows up, the doctor shows up or whatever, and is like, hey, you guys got to get out of here. And she, Mary Jane is drunk, which, by the way, I looked her up. She was in the first one of the, this, the first time Don Doler made this movie. She's uh, it's called the alien factor. She's also in that one. It's the exact same plot. And her name is also Mary Jane. She may be the same character. I do not know. And then so she goes, she, she, she Sam's like, uh, we're going to leave. And she's like, OK, we got to get out of here. She's like, OK. And she stumbles around drunkenly and gets ends up in the basement because she thinks she hears Sam down there or yes. whatever his name is. Um, <laughs> she, she has, this is the this is part where I was like the, the amount of screaming in this film. Is oh, like, yeah. She she screams. <laughs> And then she screams. And then she screams. Yes. Mary Jane. What's wrong? Mary, Mary Jane. What? What? Mary Jane. And the entire time, like, good lord, this must be the laziest movie monster ever. (laughs) Like... Kill her already! <laughs> uh, so then he uh, he kills her, and then uh, what's his name? Sam wakes up, or, or the, the the mayor Birdie wakes up. Uh, don't call him Birdie, by the way. <laughs> he gets down there, sees her yeah. wrecked, just like bleeding. Just, and yeah, and corpse. he in the greatest of the special effects of. Oh, movie, it's the best one! He gets his head ripped off. <laughs> Completely fucking ripped off. It's his head like, gets twisted, it, and his eyes instantly become this fucking big. He's like, he looks like a like a Beetlejuice, like yeah. A it, makeup it's, gr- effect. it's great when it's great when they like show it's like clearly him, yeah. and then like they just put blood on his neck, and then they cut to the monster, and they come back to him. He has a paper mache head. Yeah. <laughs> It's fucking amazing. So the alien rips his fucking head off. We get it out. Uh, the mayor gets decapitated. Fantastic. Moving on. They decide what they need to do. So now they're dead. Doesn't matter. They decide what they need to do to kill this thing because they know from the doctors earlier that if you electrocute it, it's at least can be harmed by electricity or something yeah. like that. So they're going to get this big electrical coil they call it from somewhere we can get a coil down at the power station in jessup it could work i'm willing to try it let's go get that coil <laughs> it doesn't matter where a power station of yeah some sort, some sort. this was really confusing to me. i didn't understand what their what it was or what they they, they compared it to a giant battery what does the coil do it's like a huge battery it stores an electrical charge yeah, the sucker goes to 30,000 volts. Yeah, but then they, they have said. to run electricity into it. Because yes. he tells them to go get Wait, wouldn't the... Wouldn't they just make it a capacitor? Right? It seems to me like it would be a thing that, yeah, like some sort of thing that amplifies 
the electric. I don't. I, I'm saying the wrong word, but I because I don't know anything. I'm not an electrical yeah. engineer. But <laughs> my my dad is, and I asked him a few questions. <laughs> but uh, so they end up getting this thing. Uh, they get it from the um, the power station, and while that's happening, uh, the evil ginger shows up. And, and tries to kill Lisa. Mm-hmm. Um, and is relatively successful. <laughs> he almost kills her. It seems like he did kill her, but then she fights back enough to, to get him off, and that's when uh, the ma- uh, cider, insider... Um, what is... Uh, Jack? Jake? What is, in- J- what is insider? Cider! His last name, the cop! Cider House Rules? No! What's the fucking cop's name? Jack. Jack. Cider? Jack Cider. Jack Insider. Um, that's his porn name. Don't you get it? Jesus. Um, get it, Jack? Okay. Oh, come on, like a good boy, Cinder. And look at what I've got for you. He goes to intervene, and he mm-hmm. starts getting his ass kicked, yeah. right? And then, right as he's about to die, he's about to shoot him. Yeah, he gets, his chest just blown open. Which he conveniently has a hole in his shirt, like this size, right where the bullet wound's gonna come out yeah. of. <laughs> so then uh, they get the they get the transformer, and this is the thing where I got to this point where it's like, you know, what was really weird is that. Bad movies, and this is more of a meta conversation about our show and the movies we talk about in general. I I got into this as I was watching this. Bad movies back in the day, Mm -hmm. from like pre, probably like 95-ish, before whenever digital became, when when it was film or nothing, basically. Yeah. From back then, even the worst bad movies are relatively competent to some extent. Like, this is a bad movie, right? Like, this is a cheesy, schlocky bad movie but you can understand all the lines the sound quality is okay-ish at I think most that, of the I think time that the, for the sound quality though i think that just may have been a benefit of tape because yeah, it's a lot more forgiving. forgiving okay maybe that's what it is um it's uh everything it looks okay even when mm-hmm. it's not interestingly shot like this yeah. has interesting shots and, in it but even when it's not interestingly shot it looks kind of yeah. cool and here's the thing visuals were the hindrance back there back then because unlike now you can't just be like all right let's go ahead and hit that playback nope you gotta yeah. work for dailies yeah that's what i mean and and so but and like in, in the case of uh, low budget films weeklies yeah but that's the thing that's wild to me is that even even when the shots aren't interesting they're almost always exposed well mm-hmm. and lit fairly well you know what i mean mm-hmm. like it, and that is entirely because whoever they get for their their dp or whoever they get for their grip lighting you know they got their light meter. They're checking yeah. every single thing because, because you, you had to. You cannot you afford to yeah. fuck that you up. You can't afford to fuck it up, and that's that's the thing that's wild to me. I mean, and then comparing it to well, because nowadays people can't afford to fuck it up. Yeah, and then they just don't care. And then it's, yeah, that's <laughs> what I mean. And but it's so it's so interesting to me comparing it to. Something, I am one of those people. <laughs> it's so interesting to me comparing it to something like the Incubus or Neil Breen's films or anything like that, mm-hmm. where it's now that any schlub can go grab a camera for uh, $500 or whatever and go shoot a movie. It's, I'm not I'm not singling you out. I, I, we've all done it, including all the people we talk about on the show. The budget for my film was between four and $500. I, so, I didn't yeah. know that. I was just saying, I was just saying <laughs> the camera, you know, you can go get a $500 camera and shoot a movie so that ever now, I actually think I much prefer, and I think a more pure good bad experience come from modern good bad films. I think this is more of like this this one, and we'll get there in a second. I, I think qualifies as good bad, but it's like this weird thing where it's like it's just schlocky and yeah. like a cheap script yeah. and it, like it, and like a sh- silly script, but it's, it's a, not. It's a safe script. It's a very safe script. Well, in in regard to. Th- in, in regard to a film. So, like, you know, you have your antagonist come up, you have your protagonist, you know, general problems, and, you know, they do their yeah. thing. It, it, it's, it's a very safe script. It's not like in, say, Neil Breen, where he spends the first 20 minutes telling us about how corrupt the And I think is. that's what it is, is because I, I think I, one of the reasons I prefer modern 
good bad movies is because they're like more fun to watch because they're not because modern ones are like old ones are fun to watch like this one was mm-hmm. fun to watch but they're not the parade of incompetency that modern good bad films are because I, I think it's the thing is because in order to get a movie back then made you yeah. either had to have the money yourself or you had to sell it to somebody to be able to you know because yeah. it wasn't cheap to make a movie so like even you know, the we, worst movies you know what we call that <laughs> you know what we call that Brian Quality control. Yeah, it, re- it really is. And which is why I'm so thankful for digital medium because it means we get shit like Neil Breen. And now he shot a lot on film, I think. The Bronze Star. The medal for gallantry in action. And I've never been so proud of our troops. But I have no love to live for anymore. But um, he just had the money. But, uh, but we get things like the Incubus. No! or like Meltdown. Or, yeah. or you know, all of that stuff where it's David May or it was uh, Alex, Alex Mazinet. This is Lenny G from News News Today. We are on location and following the case that everyone is talking about. Of course, the Lady Rider case is still being investigated by police, but just a hundred yards from here, another biker was found down and unfortunately castrated. Where we get these. Now anybody who wants to go fucking make a movie can just do it, which means we get infinitely more of just those like. Mm-hmm. What is this? I, uh, it's so interesting to me. It's not like I never did this before. I was gonna vouch for it, but first, I wanted that kid to take me to his connect, and his connect was gonna close out the Lady Writers case and all the homicides that are narcotics related. I love there's just a brief moment, and it's a great schlocky uh, moment in the movie. Is that uh, because uh, Drago like ripped open Lisa's? Uh, when he was choking her or whatever, he like ripped her, did that to her a little bit. Um, oh, oh, they're buttons. They're like click buttons. Yep. Nice. I was wondering how how that was so easy. They're not uh, regular buttons. Um, he, he he like fucks her shirt up. So the one of the doctors comes up and goes, well, Lisa, we need to get you out of that police uniform and into something else. And then what they get her into is it's, a see-through yes. spaghetti strap top. Let's get out of those clothes. Thank you. And so we get another great five-minute shootout, uh, and but no laser this time. They're just shooting at the alien, and it's standing there going, Rawr, and running mm-hmm. around. And then so they, th- their plan, their whole plan, by the way, was they ran all this. They they attached a bunch of wire to the battery thing. The, yes, yes. The, and the, the way they described it was wrap it around that tree, which I'm like, okay, and then wrap it around that post, which I'm like, hang on a second. Let's move. Right, uh, I think we'll string it between the pole and that tree. What's that post made out of? Yeah. Because if if, it, if you're wrapping that around a metal post, that's completely stupid because now you've just grounded that electric current. Yep. And that's, that's what my dad... I'm like, just going to say yep because I don't know anything <laughs> yeah, that, about that's, electricity. That's, that's the thing that ca- caught me off guard because that, that's what my dad was explaining to me is that if that depends on what that post was because if it's yeah. if it's metal, that's grounded and that, that's yeah. just wire. Yeah. So they But the thing that was really weird to me is they wrap around a bunch of times so that yeah. there's like... 20 wires going yeah, back exactly. and forth from like, and I'm like, wouldn't one do it? I feel like uh, it, I don't think you'd get more current or whatever through a, maybe well, you would. Need, I don't you know. need two. Oh, sorry. Yeah, two. Wouldn't two do it? Yeah. yeah. But whatever. Um, anyways, so they wrap it around a bunch of times and then uh, they, they're they going to flip the breaker in the basement of this house to get the power to the super capacitor or whatever the fuck it is um, so that they can electrocute this thing. And I guess this thing, like we established earlier, is blind. Because it just walks right into this fucking wire. Walks right into it, and as it's like, rrr, rrr, um, it's pulling it loose. And so Jamie, Jamie, or whatever the fuck his name is, is like, I gotta hold on to this or it's gonna get loose, it's gonna fall off, and then it's not gonna, I don't know. For whatever reason, he has to hold on to it. So they tell him, to, he goes, do it! Hey, Ruth! And they throw the breaker, electrocuting the alien, but in the process, Jamie gets fucking fried. (laughs) 
<laughs> yes, yes. He looks like uh, the Crypt Creeper. Yeah, the Crypt Creeper. Um, yeah, he, he straight up, he looks like the corpse from uh, Dracula 3000 when they get yeah, done with exactly. him. Yeah, uh, exactly. He, he falls on the ground. With just like amazing a, goo-goo. Yeah. <laughs> like googly eyes. Go- goo-goo eyes. <laughs> got goo-goo doll eyes. Um, You're the closest to heaven that I'll ever be. Perfect. You took it off. That counts. No, it doesn't. <laughs> you did. You took it off. That counts. Shit. Shit. Come on. That counts. Is that one rolling? Yeah, it's rolling. Okay. There. Alien explodes. <laughs> and a glorious explosion. And then, uh, like like any good bad movie, uh, that's just the end. The yeah. camera tilts into yeah, space. Yeah, no, it's, it's <laughs> It's the end of Tiptoes. The yeah. camera tilts into space, and then it fucking ends. <laughs> it's a lot. Here's the here's the arguable thing though. Compared to Tiptoes, is it as is it as messed up as the ending of Tiptoes? Oh no, not even close. <laughs> no, no. That's the thing about this movie is it's. Well, I would say it is good bad. Mm. I would give it the judgment of good bad. One, it's an hour and twenty minutes, which is if you keep it under an hour and thirty, you're you're already on your way to a, a solid mar- or rating. Um, it's fun to watch. Uh, it's silly. Um, it doesn't. It's uh, that's the thing. It doesn't have the incompetency that I like in my good bad films. You know what I mean? Like yeah. the acting's not very good. The acting's kind of incompetent, and and some of the elements here and there, some of the storytelling elements are like, Ugh. but it doesn't have. It's 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 short enough and wacky enough and schlocky yeah, enough to be good it's bad. Saving grace is the fact that it's short. And, yeah, and and it's good. Sh- it's schlocky. Like it's yeah, it, exactly. it's sort of like your traditional good bad like mm-hmm. B movie that like you would watch on TV late at night in like the nineties or you know what I mean. Like mm-hmm. it is it, it it strikes me as that, but it's not. I prefer my good bad movies in the vein of a Neil Breen of a. Uh, an Alex Mazinet, as we've talked about, yes. as a bro in in the vein of a bro and Wilson, whatever that guy's name was, Th- that's the like the, where it's just every level is incompetent mm-hmm. and 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 like it's shot weird and there's weird sound stuff and the acting is so horribly bad because like as bad as some of the acting is in this, none of it's like over the top terrible, which is what I I really enjoy. Um, but it's still good bad I, I think it's you know it's schlocky B movie fun like it's yeah. fine um, I love this real quick one last note uh, at the very end of the credits roll and it says produced by the amazing uh, by amazing film production yes I saw that I was like oh no I was like never has there been Why? a more optimistic production company <laughs> title <laughs> the only thing that would have been better if it would have popped up at the end that it would have had a question mark yeah. As well. Yeah. I'm like, good lord, you're gonna sequel by it and then have it called Amazing Films. Amazing film production is like good, bad, or bad, bad is brought to you by the really good YouTube channel company, movie company. <laughs> Guys who do things. <laughs> I was like, that is brilliant. That is brilliant. What are you doing up here? I want another drink party. That's it. Uh, like we said, uh, good, bad, but it's it's all right. Yeah. It's I wouldn't I. Yeah, uh, it, it's great a schlock. Yeah, it's just good schlock, but it's it doesn't elevate to like really good bad status no. in my opinion. Um, but it's 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 fun to watch. Yeah, it doesn't have that same troll qual- troll two quality. No, it just doesn't have the same level of uh, of je ne sais quoi that those movies do. That was it for the Halloween or sorry. The Hollow Breen Spectacular 2018, featuring zero Neil Breen films. Ah! Ah. I have a podcast called This Film Is Lit, where me and my girlfriend Katie talk about movies that are based on books. Our episode that will be out around the time this one is out is The Legend of Sleepy Hollow, or whatever the fuck it's called. Sleepy Hollow, the one with Johnny Depp, uh, comparing that movie to the story it is based on. You mean the one where he's taking care of his mom and then she dies? I've never seen it, so I don't know. And he has his mentally disabled brother that he has to... Sure. I'm describing what's eating Gilbert Grape. I was about to say, that sound. I was like, halfway through that, I was like, that sounds surprisingly like, what's eating Gilbert Grape? But I was just going to go with it, because I had no idea. Um, 
But yeah, we're doing Legend of Sleepy Hollow, and then after that, we're wrapping up Harry Potter. Uh, check out Luna and the Moonling. Uh, it's a little fun little game that our friend Yes for Mephros worked on. Uh, you can check us out on Patreon. We have a podcast. We have which we need to record an episode of soon uh, and do another AMA. We'll have that patrons. Fear not. We'll have an AMA coming yes. soon uh, and, and some other stuff maybe podcast wise. Uh, and also, if you support us at the five dollar above level, you get uh, access to Broken Dreams, which I put a clip in in the last episode. And all of our patrons get early access to the episodes, usually on Thursday, sometimes on Wednesday. It depends on when we get them done. So that's going to do it for this episode. Until next time, keep watching movies. I'm not going to recommend. I mean, I am. It's good, bad. I'll say go ahead, watch. What the fuck was it called? Night Beast. <laughs> I'm going to say go out and rewatch a Neil Breen film. Yeah, uh, for now, Brian's going to have to go out into the desert and uh, my people need me, so. I'm going to, I'm going to. I'm gonna, uh, yeah, Halloween. Go celebrate Halloween. Happy Halloween, everybody. Go be spooky. Dude, my character doesn't fade, does he? No. Dang it. Okay, I'll just stay here. <laughs>